Oh yeah, baby! We are back, everybody. Welcome to Stoppage Time with Ian Joy and John Buckets. I'm brought to you with our partners, PointsBet. Yes, that is right. The one-stop shop for you and all your betting needs. Go to PointsBet, download the app, and make sure you're enjoying all the content that we're providing across all of our platforms when it comes to sports, including the beautiful game. John Bakataima! I'm back, baby. How you doing? Yeah, baby! Ian, I am back. We are back. Stoppage time is back, as always, with our beautiful partners over at Points Bet Sportsbook. I am refreshed. I am renewed. I took a couple weeks off during this international break and still was throwing out some winners here and there on Twitter. But ultimately, I just took some me time. And Ian, I am feeling so damn good right now. It's not even funny. I can tell you missed me. And I did miss you. That too. I missed your beautiful voice as well. And I can tell that a lot of our people out there have been missing the show. Some of the angry messages that I received on social media <laughs> didn't go down too well with me just to let everybody else out there know. It's time for me and Buckets to take a break, people. All right, we needed a little break. We needed a refresh. And now it's time to get back to business and provide some winners for you. This is episode number 47. To everybody out there, we will be putting out an express episode because we are going to be putting out another episode as we look ahead to the weekend on Friday. So everybody look out for for that one. I have just arrived back into the United States of America, home, uh, great to be home, from Germany after my short vacation, plus playing at the beautiful Millentor FC St. Pauli. Wow, it was good to be home to see all my friends, my family members, and everybody out in Germany. I had an amazing experience. Go check out my social media platforms. We do have some photos and uh, some little clips for you as well to enjoy if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, but Buckets, I had a hell of a time, man. A hell of a time. What did you think of some of the pictures I sent you? I wish I was there, man. It looked like you just had the most fun I've seen in a long time. I kind of want to just have a little bit of a story time with Ian, though. I want to hear all about your experiences. What was Hamburg like? Uh, what was the game like? How did it feel to play again? What were the people like there? Just, I just want to hear. I want to sit and listen for a bit. Yeah, you can sit and listen. No, this is why we're doing this episode, because I think it's time for us to have a little bit of a catch up. As you can see from the jersey here, I'm wearing the jersey. It's all colors are beautiful. Um, Jan Philip Kala was the player, uh, former teammate of mine, whose testimonial game it was in Germany. Played for St. Pauli for 17 years, over 300 games for the club across uh, youth level and reserve and then first team. He, uh, he he was a cult figure in among St. Pauli fans. And it's not always for what he did on the field. It was sometimes for the work he did off the field for the community and um, what he was as a human being, helping people in and around Hamburg and also help people be accepted in, in Hamburg and around football in general. Always wore the rainbow armband color, which I loved. And uh, as you can see from the badge, this was his logo, which we had on our jersey in the game as well, which is the rainbow St. Pauli logo logo, which I absolutely love because he did a lot of work um, in and around the community in St. Pauli, um, helping people be accepted, uh, fighting against discrimination um, across many platforms, uh, but certainly homophobia in particular was a main focus of him. And I love that, you know, I just love seeing people, you know, honor him for what he did off the field and on the field because he was a tremendous human being. But the game itself was great, Buckets. I know you're intrigued about the game. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the game and then I'll tell you about my experiences being in Germany. The game was class. My team won. That's the only fucking thing you need to know first and foremost, okay? I won. I played 30 minutes in the game, longer than I expected to go. Felt pretty goddamn good as well. Uh, we went 3-0 up very quickly. My opponent, um, who was coming against me, Arvid, he's a former player uh, for St. Pauli, but also played for the rivals, uh, Hamburg. He uh, he was like, Ian, you, you know this is only a friendly game, right? Like, you, you, you can play a little lighter. I was fucking smashing him every chance I had. I got stuck into him. And he wanted me to give him a gift. So I decided to give a penalty kick away, Buckets so that they could get back into the game. 3-1, it turned out to be. Um, so, the yeah, I mean, listen, by the time I went off the field, I think we were leading by four goals to one, and my team was cruising. They were in cruise control, and I felt good, man. No injury concerns, good to get on the ball, um, and actually, we'll put a link out as well. I'll get the boys and the production team to put a link out to the game, so you can go back and watch the game if you want anybody out there who's on YouTube um, and enjoy action as well. But, yeah, 
the game itself was brilliant, man. I think it finished like, I don't know, like eight, six or something like that was something crazy. But I went in the first half, played 30 minutes, took a 15 minute break. Second half, I went into the commentary booth and I did uh, German commentary for the first time ever in my life. I did some German commentary. It was for Sky Sports over in Germany. And that was a that was a bit of a rush as well, man. Really enjoyed that. I'm glad to hear you had such a good time. There is one question that I know that everyone on social media has been asking me about, Ian, and I had to check it myself. I had a ticket for Ian Paul Joy to get a yellow card in that match. Did it happen? Do you know what? I don't even know if I got a yellow. <laughs> I, can't, I don't even know. because I, I, Listen, I, I had a couple of good tackles, one really crunching tackle, which felt really good. I was kind of scared going into it because I thought, I don't want to hurt myself here. Most important thing for me was to come away without any injuries. But I gave away the penalty kick. You know, the ball just went past me and I raised my arm and it just hit my elbow. And I did the the shoulder. Ah, you know, it hit my shoulder. You know, it's not a penalty. And the referee was having none of it. I don't know if he produced a yellow card for that or not. I don't know. Um, But yeah, I didn't really get too close to too many people to get some sliding tackles in, but some of my friends did. There was a few nasty challenges going on. But you know what it's like when you get out there? You're just competing. You're getting after it. And and I loved it. There was over 10,000 fans at the stadium as well, which was great. But walking onto the field with my two kids, uh, Harvey and Alessandra, was really awesome for me because they'd never seen me play soccer before. And I just, I whispered in their ears, we're walking out onto the pitch, say, remember this moment forever because this was special for me. It'll be the last time I ever take to the field. I'm never playing again. I don't care who asked me. I'm not playing. Um, just have no interest in it anymore. But that was a special moment in honor of my good friend, uh, Jan Philip Kala. I wanted to be there. But seeing my former teammates doing the old routines, the locker room, putting the music on, it was like the good old days, man. It was like the music was bouncing. <laughs> there was a few beers getting drunk before the game, might I add, uh, which is not normal. But like for me, I'm a bit of a pro. When I get in the locker room, I'm ready to go game time, get on the pitch, do my usual warm up. And I'm looking to my side and there's my old captain, Fabio Morena, doing his old warm up in the same position as me on the field. And I was like, this is absolutely weird um but it was a special occasion because i got to take my family over and uh, my wife nicole she went over to the game with our two children which was nice because as a family together enjoying that experience together was very unique for us and um, also my eldest daughter madison who was born in hamburg was there flew my parents over for the occasion as well um it was fucking special man it was a great occasion i'm glad we lived it together really enjoyed it um even though i gave away a penalty kick it was a special moment for all of us that we'll cherish in our lives forever so i love hamburg i absolutely love the city i love my football club fc st Pauli, and um they've now got a museum over their buckets which uh, has a couple of pictures of me in there and i gave wow. some items from you know some record-breaking times when i was there big games and things like that that will be shown in the museum as well but i was thinking about you while i was over there because I thought fucking buckets would love this, man. Would you like to go to a game sometime at St. Pauli? Dude, absolutely. No questions asked. I will go anytime, any place. I just would love to go over to Germany first and foremost. But also, the only soccer game I've been to is a Nashville SC game. So I got to branch out a bit still. I got to see some of these bigger stadiums around the world, you know? Just repeat that. The only no, professional, the only soccer, professional game soccer game you've ever I've been, been to, to is Nashville. Is Nashville SC. Fuck. <sighs> We got to change that, man. <laughs> we got to change that. Your world is about to be changed. Like, obviously, because we have such a great partner in points, but they want to open our horizons and open doors for us so that we can experience things, but also so that we can provide for our loyal listeners certain experiences that we can share with. Um, and I want to change your world when it comes to soccer as well. So um, I did sort out some of my friends, my best friend growing up, Colin, uh, sent me a message and he's like, hey, Ian, I just wonder if you could do me a favor. My my dad's turning 70 uh, coming up. Can you get me some tickets to a big game in Germany? I was thinking, no problem, which game you want to go to? And he's like, oh, not, not nothing major, just Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. And I thought, <laughs> oh my word, I can't believe it. I got to try and get tickets now for that game. 
like absolutely insane. So I did. Of course, I went out there, got the tickets, managed to make it happen for him. So he's going to look forward to that game this weekend. Him and his uh, brother, Gordon, and uh, of course, uh, father, uh, Tom as well. I'm hoping they have a great time out in Munich for this game. Uh, Buckets, I want to turn my attention to you because as uh, Aaron Judge just hits a home run for the New York Yankees right now, as we're recording this one, I shall do a short celebration. So everyone who is a, a Yankee ha- hater out there in our listeners, apologize. But I am celebrating Judge just hitting that massive home run to open the scoring for the Yankees as we welcome back baseball. Uh, make sure you also go and check out our new baseball content. Ariel is absolutely killing it. We we love everything she's doing at points bet. So make sure everybody goes out and check it out. Um, so international week just happened, but before we get into the games, what the fuck have you been up to over the last week or so? Ian, I'm a bit like you in some ways. I'm a bit of a workaholic where it's hard for me to kind of step back and get away from the screens, get away from the games, especially with soccer where we really do have it 24-7, 365. But I took a couple weeks and just tried to expand my mind and try some new things. I tried meditating over this break, just went out and sat in the woods quietly early one morning, watched the sunrise. That, ooh, oh, that sucked. I'm not good at meditating. I'm not good at sitting quietly for an hour and just doing nothing. I was losing my mind. But something I did do that I think would impress a lot of people here at home listening is I learned kind of to cook. I made a very nice little balsamic glaze uh, marinade for some pork chops. Uh, And that was about it. That was two weeks of practice to make one successful dinner. And I'd count it as a win. I'd say it was a pretty good couple weeks here. Do you know, like, I'm I'm laughing because I know you've missed me because you almost (laughs) cursed there. And, I did. Um, you're happy to be back alongside me. And it's like, we're not even got an audience or anyone's watching us. You're just back in the zone, which I appreciate. Um, but I will say this though, um, listening to you try things outside of what we do together and the entertainment space and the media space, it's massively important. So trying to look after your mental is so valuable. So even though meditation was not for you, it will be for many people out there. <laughs> I'd love to try it as well. But the cooking is also a sort of meditation, just so you know that. You're trying to cook. You're trying to do these new things. That is a style of meditation. And if it works for you to take your mind away from work, from what we do, um, great. And how did you find it? How did it turn out? How did it taste? Give us the update. So here's here's the update is that, and I'm going to throw an additional update that you didn't even ask for. I am still seeing that same wonderful lady that I've been seeing now for a couple of weeks. What's her name? Uh, Her name is Maddie. We got a name. <laughs> I've been searching Ooh. for a name for so long, and you. I forgot. Get I it. haven't told you her name. It's been too long. We can't do breaks like this because it ruins the flow. Doesn't matter. Have so one thing. Red? Wait, wait. You've gone red. Look at that oh, blush on I your haven't. face, <laughs> Corey, Matt, Rob, whoever it is, fix this in post. Just make this look normal. Ah, but Ca- carry one, on. One thing I want to say that I did is I went to Costco Wholesale, which is my favorite yeah. place on earth. And I bought $95 worth of pork chops. And I spent an entire afternoon and said, I'm just going to practice cooking this pork chop meal until I can, you know, actually make something edible. And so I went through about 90 bucks worth of pork chops before I made one that I tasted and said, that might not give me food poisoning. So Ian, it was a (laughs) successful venture. It was more of an expensive venture that I was hoping for, but it was therapeutic. You know, it was nice to say, this is something that I'm terrible at and I'm going to do it until I'm not quite as terrible at it and it was fun i had music playing i had a couple maybe that's why it took a bit was i had too many drinks in the process but it was a fun couple weeks here well what did maddie think of the food i haven't made it for her yet oh you haven't made that's, it for her no, so you just made yet, it for yourself yet. so you're still yes. not at the level where you can actually feed it to someone else no no i would i <laughs> unless if i hated someone i would not serve that to them yet Listen, you uh, you continue to do what you do. I appreciate it because now you will master it at some point because it's something you're passionate about, which I can clearly see. And I know you love eating as well. So at some point when you do make the, the journey up to New York, we'll we'll go out, we'll meet some friends that we that I do have as well um, who are in the, uh, the eating restaurant bar space that can help you with your cooking. And maybe I'll get you some lessons along the way as well to master your craft. How about that? I think that sounds wonderful, Ian. 
Dude, what was the reaction on Twitter towards you? Obviously, disappointment from people that we didn't release a show as quickly as we have been doing because we did need a vacation and some time off. Um, but what was the reaction like over the international break? A lot of people out there I saw were, were at you. They wanted to get some picks, but you were given some ideas, but weren't really necessarily throwing out picks. You were just saying, maybe we should do this, should do that. I saw some unbelievable tweets coming to your direction from a lot of our loyal listeners who were enjoying the international break and had some success. Yeah, so the way I approach the Euros in general and international break is it's a difficult thing to bet on because, as we talked about in our show, it doesn't happen all the time. It's hard to look at the head-to-head -head history and look at how this team has been playing when players are bouncing around, moving, traveling, and all that mess. And so how I approached it is I just tweeted out thoughts. I said, hey, Turkey plays this afternoon. Turkey's national team has it over two and a half goals at a 90% clip since 2018. I would just do stuff like that. And I would kind of give people the information to make their own bets, Ian, and we had some absolute bangers coming out of social media, specifically with Scott McTominay for the Scottish or from the Scotland national team, who was a plus 1400 anytime goal scorer against Spain. He grabbed a brace, but it was nice. A lot of people enjoyed it. A lot of people had fun. There was definitely some frustrations as people were like, this is awesome, but I can't do my Bundesliga parlay when there's no Bundesliga teams playing. So I think people are excited to get back to the action, but it's just, it's a nice change of pace. And it helps you appreciate when you do have 200 games a day to bet on, as opposed to the eight national games you get during this break. Yeah, it certainly makes you appreciate club football, that's for sure as well. And Absolutely. how lucky we are that the football never stops and our show never stops. Even though we took a slight break, we still don't stop. We continue <laughs> to provide the content as Bucket did on his social media platforms and we do on stoppage time as well. Um, I did see someone put that bet on McTominay who tweeted you saying, first goal scorer, plus whatever. And then he also put a bet on his last goal scorer, if I'm not mistaken, right? He did first goal scorer, anytime goal scorer, first to score for the Scottish team and last goal scorer. So he had four bets and the lowest one was plus 1100. And he goes, oh. Buckets, am I doing this right? And I was oh. like, yes, you're doing wonderful. Oh. Congratulations. Dude, what a game that was as well for Scotland to beat Spain. That was oh. one of the biggest shocks over the international break. And uh, so happy for the Tartan Army. They deserve this moment. They should enjoy this moment. Great for Tar uh, Scott McTominay. And I'm, I'm happy for those betters who went on to jump on the back of that McTominay bet as well. Here's a great stat for you as well. He scored four goals over the two games in the international break. Scott McTominay, two in each game. Um, in his first previous, what, 37 international games, how many goals do you think he scored in those 37? Oh, is it zero? One. One goal. <laughs> <laughs> One goal in 37. Four in the last two. Well, that's, Not bad for some. Somebody asked me, he goes, how is it plus 1,400 odds? And I go, I... I haven't watched him a ton before this. I don't know what he did, but apparently the answer is not much in the previous 37 games. What did you think of Germany's loss to Belgium? Belgium looked pretty good, man. New boss in charge. They look oh, good. Don't they look good. Tedesco in charge. And let's talk about Lukaku too, man. Yeah. The guy who was yeah. a bit of a flop during the World Cup and everyone is saying he's washed, he's done, this. That. Belgium looked terrifying. They looked like the golden generation that I went specifically out of my way to say that they do not exist anymore. They showed up. Even KDB got on the score sheet. It was a it was a tough team, and it showed more errors in the Germany lineup that they're really almost solely reliant on Fulkrug right now. It's the weirdest thing that they're just struggling to produce results that aren't on the back of him right now. So I'm a little worried for this German side, but I'm also excited to see Belgium, I guess, kind of finding form again here. Yeah, I'm excited for both as well. And let's just face it, Germany are not the Germany that we previously no. knew that won the World Cup. This is the new generation that's not good enough. They're nowhere near good enough to compete to win championships yet. They do have a younger generation coming through. Let's hope they're better than this current generation. But when you're relying on a 30-plus-year-old Thulkrug to get your goals there, even <laughs> though I like him, um, it could be problematic for you, especially when you're playing against the big boys. KDB, Kevin De Bruyne, got two assists in that game, but also got a goal himself. It's great to see Lukaku back. After the criticism, he received also from myself and you buckets where we criticized him in the Champions League for not necessarily looking match sharp. He's looking fitter. He looks healthier. And even just putting himself in the right position to just do those tap ins. Great to see from him. USA also played a couple of games. Um, did you catch any of the USA action? I actually bet Pepe to score in both of those games. And so that was a personal one just because I, I've got a buddy that we know, Jimmy Conrad on social media, who I've seen yep. him harp on time and time again. Baralter should have brought him to the national team. So I saw him starting and I said, I don't watch this squad, but maybe he'll show everyone that they were wrong. Looks like he did too, Ian, I got to say. <laughs> 
Pepe train. Hard not to jump on it. Ooh. I don't take too much into these games because obviously you're playing against opposition that you should beat, but I'm happy for Pepe and I'm happy for the USA. I'm actually happy for Anthony Hudson as well. I hope he does get the job, you know. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the US national team going forward as far as the manager is concerned. Uh, something very strange happened last weekend, Buckets, because there was some club action in action last week and many people might have betted it after what we were talking about days before MLS action took place. And that was, of course, Major League Soccer having an advantage for the home teams. Here's the strange thing, the strange statistic <laughs> from last weekend, Buckets. You know what I'm going to say, right? Yep. There was only three home wins from 13 games in Major League Soccer last weekend. Three home wins, which is the complete opposite from what we saw the opening four match days or three match days. I mean, that is unbelievable. Did you bet any MLS this past weekend? I did, but real quick, I saw a tweet. I don't know if you saw it because you were traveling, Ian, but it was at you, and it said, Ian, uh, I think that the MLS is listening to your podcast, and they're trying to keep you on your toes because <laughs> nobody won it home this week. But I did. I was still, and I'm still going to keep betting this, even though it missed, that Hani Mukhtar anytime goal score, it's got to be coming soon. It's just, maybe I'm in my own head. I'm giving him that national bias because it's the one stadium I've been to. But it's got to be coming, right? And the plus odds, I'm yeah. going to keep betting it even when he doesn't score. You bet it, you bet it, you bet it, because at some point he's going to click into action. He's also not match fitness because he's had some injury issues as well in preseason. So watch out for him. He's not always been in the starting 11 as well. So let's mm -hmm. let's just keep our eye on how things go there for him. Um, before we do move on real quickly to provide a best bet for our loyal listeners and followers out there, I want to chat Bayern Munich because I know it's your club. You're wearing the scarf. You've got the jersey behind you. And I have been saying this for six months, uh, not only on Stoppage Time, but also on uh, some of my other shows as well. And whenever I've had a platform, I have been saying, listen, there's a problem at Bayern Munich. Something's not quite right. I can tell it. I can see it. It just doesn't feel right. And even though they have been winning games in the Champions League, Domestically, it's been much more difficult for Bayern Munich. They've conceded goals. They've just lost top spot to Borussia Dortmund. They had been chasing top spot from Union Berlin for a lot of the season. Um, and things weren't necessarily great for them. So they decided to fire Julian Nagelsmann. They then brought in Thomas Tuchel in charge. And now I'm like, well, what the heck? I mean, this was a hell of a break for me. I decide to leave. I now no longer have <laughs> my pl platforms to be able to voice my opinion. And I was proved right, Buckets. Something is not quite right at Bayern Munich. And that's why they decided to move on from Nagelsmann. So overall, your thoughts on this being a Bayern Munich fan? It's crazy. It's been a crazy couple of weeks here. And I'm going to do my best not to speculate. Because whenever a sacking like this happens, you see a million different rumors. And this happened and this happened. Why did Nagelsmann break up with his girlfriend? Was she doing X, Y, and Z? Ultimately, what it sounds like is there were some behind the scenes or scene issues. I saw a lot of people in the front office of Bayern Munich saying that Nagelsmann was viewed more as like a cool older brother rather than a coach or as a father figure that was leading the team. I did see recently that there was a fight between Sadio Mane and Nagelsmann that came out where yep. Mane confronted Nagelsmann for not starting him and players in the locker room said that Nagelsmann kind of backed down and seemed scared of Mane and then started Mane the next day. So you can't if that did happen, you can't really do that as a coach. But ultimately, this just shows how high this bar is for this Bayern Munich squad. You've got to show up every day. You've got to win every day. You cannot back down to your players, and you have to be the boss. And I think a lot of people didn't really see him as the boss. I don't think he got the respect that he needed out of a squad like Bayern Munich here. Before I respond to you, I must apologize if you hear the banging that's going on around me. The, the cleaners are in the house right now and decided to rattle the vacuum around like it's a drum set. So if you do hear them, that's what's happening. And yes, I do have a cleaner to clean my house. <laughs> and no, I don't give a shit what you think about it. And neither does my wife, Nicole, as well. So uh, real quickly, before we just finish on Bayern Munich, um, I want to mention this as well. My wife, Nicole, who was obviously in Germany with me with the kids, and uh, she loves our show. She watches pretty much every episode. She's actually listening to me right now as I record this. Um, she wants to make an appearance on the show, Buckets. What do you think about that? you think that would be something that we should entertain? Absolutely. As long as she's given a pick too, right? Oh, so a bit of pressure for her as well. So she oh, must yeah. provide a pick to make an appearance. I'll let her know that and hopefully she'll want to jump on the show. But at some point, I'm going to have her in our studio. We're going to talk about life in general, but also I'll ask her to provide a pick for you buckets as well. But if she provides a pick buckets, you've got to put a bet on it. Oh, absolutely. And I'll screenshot my bet, call it the Nicole bet and post it for everyone else on Twitter to follow too. Just keep Maybe. pressure building up.
maybe we'll ask our partners, PointsBet, to actually put it on the website, the Hot Coco, because her name's Nicole, but we'll call her Hot Coco. We'll put the Hot Coco best bet for the weekend on the show, and we'll kind of try to, like, highlight it, maybe put a picture up there of her or something like that to see, you know, if she enjoys the spotlight as well. All right, let's get back to Bayern Munich. I'm off topic here. Yeah, uh, yeah listen, it was really interesting to see them getting fired. You know, Nagelsmann, I thought, was okay. I like him as a coach very much. I think he's better suited in the English game than he is the German game. Obviously came through the ranks at Hoffenheim as a very young coach. He was in his 20s when he took that job at Hoffenheim. 27, 28 years old when he got that job. Ridiculously successful My for age. such a young guy. Yeah, yeah, ridiculous. I mean, crazy, right? It's like you taking over a Bundesliga team buckets. What would happen? Relegation. <laughs> relegation, then relegation, then relegation. Yeah, we'd all go to the pub. Um, but I want to remind everybody out there that Thomas Tuchel now comes in, former Borussia Dortmund Head coach, obviously Chelsea as well, obviously PSG, still a relatively young man, had great success in the Champions League, right? I mean, terrific success in the Champions League. He is now in charge of Bayern Munich against his former club, Borussia Dortmund, this weekend. How do you see that game playing out? Oh, I'm going to hate betting on this game. I know everybody's going to want me to bet on this game. I think Tuchel, first I just want to say, is a great replacement here. And I think that he is a guy that is brought in to win the big games. He's going to help win the cup games, the Champions League. Like that is his bread and butter on the are those high pressure games. With that being said, it's still hard to bring in a brand new manager to adjust to systems and implement his own systems this quick before the biggest game of the si- season. I see Bayern Munich winning this game, Ian. I definitely do. But it's not going to be easy. And I see a ton of goals in this matchup. Obviously, wait for the lineups. Wait to see that who Tuchel has a little bit of uh, a favoritism to and getting them in that starting 11. But this is going to be a slugfest. I really think so. Well, just for you, we're going to have a best bet for that game specifically on Ah. Friday's show. So just for you, I'm going to tell you now that there will be a best bet from that game from you and I that will be coming out on our episode on Friday. But... For this episode, because it is an express episode and it's a catch-up for all of us, it's great to see you, Buckets, and to everybody out there. Thank you so much for listening, tuning in, watching, whatever you do. We appreciate you. Uh, We wanted to provide you a best bet, so we're going to give you a best bet for Friday. Buckets, I know there's a lot of games, and there's actually some great games taking place on Friday, so a lot to choose from. Where are you going for your best bet? I am going to League U here, Ian, in the matchup between Olympic Marseille, my favorite team in France, versus Montpellier. And I'm going to warn everybody here before I give it my best bet that you do need to be careful with these starting lineups the first days back from international break, because a lot of these guys that did do international duties around the world might be sitting. We could see some teams go off to a little bit of a slower start. So just be careful and always check that starting 11. With that being said, I'm keeping this one nice and easy. and I'm going with the buckets classic here because both teams to score at minus one zero five on points bet for this game to me is tremendous value. Yes, the break does make things a little bit tricky, but pre-break, Marseille was winning, but they weren't defending well. And their last six games pre-break, they conceded 13 goals over those six games, conceding twice to teams like Toulouse, getting 3 0 by PSG. It was a team that was just struggling to find their defensive form. Meanwhile, Montpellier, 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 don't know how to say it, don't really care. They were on fire before the break happened. Over their last five games before the break, they have not lost a single match going into that international break. I expect them to show up. I expect them to score goals. But again, this league and this team is not the most defensive-minded teams. I'm looking at a 2-1 or 2-2 kind of match here. BTTS at minus 105, Ian. That's what I'm sticking with. Minus 105 is pretty sexy. I might jump on the back of that one as well, Buckets. I do have some news that was in one of my group chats this morning, and it was about Unahi, the place for Marseille, Mm -hmm. that he is now out for the rest of the season, I believe, with a broken toe. He's now missing the season, and he's one of the most valuable players. I think he's played like almost every single game. Broken toe. So maybe it's not for the end of the season if it's a broken toe. Maybe it's going to be coming back just before the end of the season, but out for the foreseeable future is Unahi, the Moroccan you ever Do you ever break a toe while playing? I haven't broke my toe, but I've seriously damaged my toe um, just where the joint is. And the toes are really annoying because if you I damaged a capsule in where the joint is. And you obviously have to move that because that's where you're running, moving, kicking, all these types of things 
and it's the most annoying injury you could potentially have. Um, so you just simply, sometimes you just simply can't touch the ball or you can't even stand. So yeah, you have to get rid of it very quickly. But most people come back quickly, so I don't think he'll be out for the rest of the season unless he's had to go for serious surgery. Then he could be out for the rest of the season. So that's not very nice. Anyway, should we move on? Let's move on, yeah. I got one for you because on Friday, my best bet is coming from Germany. It is coming from the oh, Zweite Bundesliga. I'm staying away from Frankfurt Buckets. Ooh. I'm going to the second Bundesliga. It's Nuremberg against Darmstadt on Friday. There's two great games. Dusseldorf against Hamburg is another cracking game, by the way. I've got a story to tell you about that one in a minute. But I'm going to Nuremberg against Darmstadt. Nuremberg on a money line plus 240. They're the home side. Darmstadt plus 110. They are the away side. Uh, my bet is going to be Darmstadt money line plus 110 on points bet. I have of this line. This is a sexy, sexy line. Darmstadt are top of the second division by only two points. They cannot afford to drop any more points. And it also means that they cannot afford to draw any more games. They have to go for victories because there's teams chasing very closely behind them that want those automatic spots. So there's only two points between them and second place. And I think three points between third place and them can't afford to drop points. Now you've got to be very careful. Now you've got to chase the victories because if you drop points, you could very easily find yourself out of the automatic promotion points and then you're in the playoff place where you don't want to be because it's very unlikely you'll see a team go up from the second division against those lowly first division teams that are in the playoff position. So Darmstadt, as I mentioned before, are still top of the league for a reason because they've been a very tough team to beat even though 2023 has been not too kind for them. They've lost the last two away games, which does concern me but they've just not been good enough to get those victories. And if you lose away games, um, promotion is very hard to get. So you've got to make sure you at least come away with a point. Um, they did have that big win before the break against Kaiserslautern. When I watched that game, they were very good in that game. So I see them getting back to winning ways in this one, even though it's a tough place to go play. Nuremberg, I did watch them against St. Pauli. St. Pauli beat them on the road in Nuremberg, one goal to nil. Pauli were too good. I didn't think Nuremberg were terrible, but Pauli were, were far too good on the day. And Nuremberg have been better in 2023 since that the defeat against St. Pauli. They've won their last three games at home. Um, but again, playing against opposition that was sort of lower than them. Nuremberg right now are just above the relegation zone by about three or four points. They need victories too. But I don't think they have the quality enough to be able to compete with this Darmstadt side who is desperate for victories because they want automatic promotion. They don't want to be in this relegation promotion battle. They don't want that. They want automatic promotion. So I'm leaning heavily here on Darmstadt. The money line at plus 110 was just too sexy for me to turn away. Quick thoughts on the battle at the top of the second division. What do you think about Darmstadt? I know you've bet them a few times this year. I've bet them a few times and they've been kind of a tricky team to bet on for me because they seem like the side that likes to win that one nil, two nil, two one. They're not the kind of blow you out of the water top of the league team that we'll see in other leagues, but I have enjoyed betting on them and I've won a pretty penny on them so far. Ian, I want to ask you real quick, just for those viewers that might not know, how does the automatic promotion work from second to first Bundesliga? Is it top two, top four? How does that playoff uh, strategy work? Top two, great question. Top two, automatic promotion. And then you have that third place team that will go into uh, is what's called a relegation battle. So I'm just going to pull up my phone so I can actually show you who's actually is in those positions right now. Um, but basically what happens is if you're finishing the top two at the end of the season, you're getting automatically promoted to Bundesliga. So right now, Darmstadt sit on 52 points. Heidenheim sit on 50 points. Um, played 25 games, both of them. They would both automatically go up if the season was to finish right now. No need to worry. The team that's sitting in third place right now is Hamburg. They have 49 points. As I mentioned, they're three points behind Darmstadt. Hamburg um, would go into a playoff place against the team that finished third bottom of the first division, which as I pull up my phone once again to have a look who would be in that position, it would be Hertha Berlin. So Hertha Berlin are 16th in the Bundesliga. They would then take on Hamburg for, it was a home and away game. And then the winner goes uh, into the first division and then the loser of those two games will go down to the second division. So as I mentioned before, it's absolutely difficult to get out of that league automatically. So I don't think Darmstadt can afford to drop any points. Draws are not good enough. As I've mentioned before, 52 points Darmstadt, Heidenheim 50, Hamburg 49. Then it's a big drop to Dusseldorf, uh, who are on 42 in fourth place. Um, but as I mentioned to you a moment ago, I do have a story about Dusseldorf against Hamburg. So Dusseldorf play against Hamburg tomorrow as well on Friday. And that game is in Dusseldorf. 
And if Dusseldorf win that game, they would then get one step closer to Hamburg. And it would create a bit of a gap between Darmstadt and Heidenheim from Hamburg. So I think it's necessary for Darmstadt to get the victory. Here's the story. So in my game in Germany, one former player from St. Pauli was uh, my good friend, Reuven Hennings. I actually was at Hamburg with him for a short period of time. He was a rookie coming through into the under-23 team. Um, we spent a bit of time together. He's gone on to become a legend at uh, Dusseldorf and played for St. Pauli for three or four years. So we played together at this game at the weekend. And uh, apparently the rules were he's allowed to play like five or 10 minutes in this friendly testimonial game because he's got a massive game on Friday, which is a professional game, Dusseldorf against Hamburg. Anyway, not a lot of players uh, were available for this testimonial game. So a lot of players had to play like 90 minutes in this game. Guess how many minutes he played. Oh, Remember, no. he's got a game on Friday. The guy that guess was how many supposed minutes. to play 10 minutes. Yeah, guess how many minutes he played. 45? Fucking full 90 minutes, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> full 90 minutes. I played 30. I felt like I played five games. I was knackered. Um, obviously, he's a fully fit professional. That wasn't the highest tempoed game for him to worry about. Was but, he still yeah, falling, he, though? Was he still moving? Yeah, he was still moving, man. Scored and everything. What a player. Great guy as well. Great human. Uh, good to catch up with him. He was staying at the same hotel for a night where I was staying, so we, we spoke a little bit as well. But, man, that's a big one to watch out for as well. If you want to bet, <laughs> it's Dusseldorf against Hamburg, and um, I'm going to shade here that Dusseldorf win that game. Hamburg sitting in third, Dusseldorf in fourth. I'm going to shade here just slightly. I, I'm not enough to jump on it. But I'm just got a feeling that Dusseldorf can get that victory. But like I said, I'm staying away from it because it's not that strong a feeling. Um, Buckets, great to see you, man. Great to catch up with you. And um, I look forward to obviously catching up with you tomorrow. I'll be back in the studio in New York City with the Points Bet crew. Can't wait to be there. But it's good to be back, right? It's so good to be back, man. I, I liked my time off. I liked all the money I wasted on pork chops and trying to be a better human being. But I'm ready to just spend the next 72 hours doing nothing but watching club ball. That's what I'm here for. It can tell you that we like each other. It can tell you that the people like us because there is a demand for our show. And uh, we appreciate everybody out there for listening, liking, subscribing, following, retweeting, and doing what you do to provide more noise for our show. And um, Please drop comments wherever you can. Drop the comments. Keep the comments coming. If you've left a comment before on a podcast platform or on YouTube, doesn't matter. Every single show, I expect people to drop a comment because... We appreciate it. It helps our show, obviously. Um, but we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you always. So continue. Every show, let us know what you think about the show. Just write good. I don't care if you've got something negative to say as well. Let us know. If there's something in there, please just share the love with us. The comments, the likes, and the subscribes obviously help us. Help us. But we want the comments more than anything else. So please, everybody out there, make sure you drop a comment. Week after week, episode after episode, doesn't matter how many times you do it a week. Please continue to do so. Unless, um, go ahead. Unless you're Napoli for life, commenting about my damn forehead, you can leave those comments to yourself, right, Ian? You got my back there. Napoli for life is going to be commenting a lot about your <laughs> forehead after he saw how red you turned when you revealed uh, oh. your new lady crush's name. By the way, that was I a big know. red forehead. I don't remember. Right I don't. I don't remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, across these uh, match days, whether it's um, now on Friday with the games coming up or if it's on the weekend or if it's next week when Champions League returns, Points Bet's got you covered. So please, everybody out there, jump on the Points Bet app. Make sure if you can, go and bet with us. Enjoy the content. Buckets is up there pretty much regularly. You'll see his best bet on the app. You'll see his best bet on the website. I'll be up there occasionally as well, providing my best bets. But our content is across the board outstanding. As you can tell, the rapid response from our show has been sensational. We appreciate that. But now we're ready to take it to the next level. So if you could continue to support us and push us, we would appreciate you to do that with us. And if you like other Sports, go check out Ryan's show. Go check out Ariel. She's across the board, man. She's always got on uh, some great content on basketball. Uh, she's always got content on golf as well, which I'll be jumping in sporadically around the golf season. And then she's just jumped on board with baseball content as well. So please, everybody go out there, go and follow our content across the board. Share the love. Let us know what you think about the shows. And if we can do anything better, we will absolutely try our best. We have not forgot about the slate at the end of our shows, we have not forgot about that. It is coming. We're working on it to make sure that we can provide the best possible slate for you out there because you've been demanding it so much. Buckets, I guess I'll see you tomorrow, man. This has been a great catch-up. You looking forward to the weekend? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> 
Well said, Buckets. We appreciate you. So very quickly, as you saw the graphic there, it was flashing. It's basically telling us to get out of here. So if you're watching it, uh, we appreciate you. Bet responsibly. But most importantly, make sure you absolutely have it. <laughs>